There is one young man making a ton of headlines right now, and it's Domaraju, or D for short, Gukesh. He's just crossed 2750, a phenomenal achievement at just 17 years of age, and he's only just turned 17 as well. So I'm looking back at an incredible game that he played last year. This was in September 22, played in Linares, Spain, famous chess venue. Now this was a team championship. His opponent was Gawain Jones. And one thing I actually want to mention just in passing, I was on Gawain Jones' wiki page just a moment ago, you know, randomly reading, as you do, and I saw that his late wife had tragically passed away a couple of months ago. So really, really tragic news. It was following complications after childbirth, apparently. Um, they've set up a GoFundMe page to support Gawain Jones and his family two children left behind. So I'm actually linking that down below in case anyone does want to support this GoFundMe page. Just awful news. And his late wife was also a chess player, actually, a chess player. She was New Zealand born, women's international master. And that's how she obviously met Gawain through chess. So yeah, really tragic circumstances there. Um, and I've linked the page down below in case anyone wants to support that one. Anyway, on to this game here. So Gukesh, he was playing against Jones. He kicks off here with pawn to d4. And we soon see a Grunfeld on the board. Always a pleasure to see because you don't see so much of it. So characterised by this d5 move, not d6, going into a kind of a King's Indian. So now here, the main move for white is captures. And then you get the knight takes, e4, all of that classic mainline stuff. Knight f3 was played in this game though, still a common move. Now we get bishop g7 and Gukesh goes for this e3 move. Again, a bit of a sideline here. So it's a bit more of a modest setup, not immediately taking the center. Black castle is the king and now we see takes on d5, knight recaptures and the bishop develops to c4. It entices this knight to take on c3. The pawn captures towards the centre, c5, the classic move, looking to break up that centre, and white's never capturing here, unleashing this bishop, instead castles is played, and Gukesh just keeps a small edge here. Small lead in development, as white always has, and slightly more of a central presence. So we see queen c7 played, x-raying the undefended bishop, that's why queen e2 to defend that one. Knight c6 develops and now bishop a3 hits this awesome diagonal. Makes a lot of sense when you play pawn e3 as well. And now there is a threat to win a pawn. b6 deals with that one. Again, you don't want to take, take, bishop takes. You're just opening up all the black pieces in a bad way. You'd have a weak backwards pawn here. And so instead, we see rook a c1 lining up with the black queen. And now Jones carries on with bishop to b7, completing the development of his minor pieces, connecting his rooks. And now Gukesh finally takes the center with pawn to e4. And he's holding it together by tactical means. Because if black takes here and tries to win a pawn, well the problem is you've then got this uncovered attack and the rook wins the queen at the end of the line. So jumping back here, after pawn e4, what does Jones play? Well knight to a5. Now it looks sensible to open the bishop, pressure this one here. You know it's a common move in these structures, the Grinfeld, knight a5, e6 could have also been considered. But after the bishop drops back, you do have to be really careful of this piece because it can't come back here, hasn't got any forward jumps. Okay, it can go back to c6, but you know, a knight on the rim is dim. You really have to be careful. You have to see how you're going to recycle it. So bishop h6 was played to start with, kicks this rook away. And now the next move is not so precise. The pieces are just looking a bit clumsy after this one. E6 more on the cards when you run it with the computer, the immediate E6, even bishop g7 back. But rook a c8, well, now you get d5 from Gukesh, and the rook is suddenly blocked, and the bishop is blocked retreating, and therefore the knight can't recycle into somewhere like this, and you can't come back to c6 with the knight. So the pieces are getting kind of clumsy on top of each other for black. 
e6 play trying to break up that center but c4 reinforces it this knight really looking atrocious now this rook now moves for a second time we can see the problem now with the initial rook a c8 queen c2 played comes off the line of this rook and now we get f5 another classic break in the grunfeld for black to break up the white center but Gukesh calmly carries on, rook f to e1, supports that pawn, and we now get some liquidation in the centre. White recaptures here, and you reach this classic position. Excuse me. So white's got this past d pawn here, running through the centre. Black, for their part, has got good end games. If you can survive the attack, trade down some pieces. You've got a three on one pawn thing going on here on the queen side. That's going to be good in the long run. But after bishop c8, which is a mistake, the computer preferred queen to d6 or bishop g7, but especially queen d6, you know, blockading this pawn. Well, we can see Jones's idea, recycle this knight. If you can get one more move as black to then hit b7 with the knight, look to come to d6, you could be sitting fine. But Gukesh finds an awesome move, very thematic. What do you think he played here? You know, do pause if you want to look for it. <clears throat> so he kicks on with pawn to d6, basically forcing that queen to take and then activating the rook, kicking it away and bishop d5 check. The king moves, bishop b2 check. Look at these bishops. I mean, what snipers from afar, right? Bishop g7 blocks and now knight g5. And all of the white pieces here are just flooding into the attack. This knight is completely stuck out on a limb. And now the icing on the cake here, after bishop f5 from Gawain Jones, this is the image shown in the thumbnail. This is the key moment. What do you think Gukesh played here to round off an awesome game with an amazing combination? So there are a couple of moves here. One option is to take first here and then unleash the move that Gukesh plays. The other option is to do it immediately, which is queen to c3. I mean, what a fantastic move. That's a double exclam move, even though I've not added the double exclams there. There we go, double exclam. I mean, this is a stunning move, right? Let's explore the obvious. What happens if black takes that queen? Well, the bishop recaptures with check, and because the king's got no squares, sure you can start chucking rooks and things, but it's no good. Queen g7 to block is best, and then this knight from g5, this is one of the key follow-up moves. This is the top move. And if the rook takes, well, you're getting mated, because this queen is completely pinned. It can never do any defense. And if we come back here, if you don't take that knight, if you sidestep with the king, well, we can see all of the windmill checks that we're walking into. And after knight d6 check, this king steps back. Well, this is one sample line. And here we can see that white's just huge material up, an entire rook. And if we step it back here, where are we? So after knight d6 check, if you try and interpose with the bishop, still no good. You know, you can take the queen. Again, there's different moves for black. Take here, take here. None of it works. You always finish up material as the white player. In this line, an entire rook. So the whole combination is completely sound by Gukesh. Let's just run it back slightly here. So this is the big problem with actually taking that queen on c3. Then you get the whole flood of attack coming with knight f7, etc. So what do we see instead? Played by Gawain Jones. Well, he takes here with check. The rook now recaptures and he tries this pawn to h6 move. Whoops. Pawn h6 to evacuate that knight. Now, best according to the engine is knight c6. But then you can simply liquidate. These come off. You take here. You're an entire knight up. You know, it should be fairly trivial, even though black has an extra pawn. So coming back here, h6 played, and now how do you think Gukesh finished the game? One final awesome combination. So the move to play is once again to liquidate things down, but when you get to here, there's a pierre de resistance, as they say, right? A final kind of swashbuckling blow. How did Gukesh finish it? Well, well done if you found the rook to e7. This is a very difficult move to find. And again, there's just awesome tactics going on. Because if you take the bishop, 
well now we uh, checkmate like this. And you can't take the rook, you know, the queen is pinned to the king. What else to explore? Um, okay, so you take the knight. Well, now you can take with check, the king moves. Here you take a game with check. I mean, okay, you're already a full rook up, but you can even lead to mate, you know, something like this. And we lead to this checkmate. Very nice, very beautiful. So if we come back here, the final moves of the game, rook e7. Did the queen take on b2? I maybe added that. I don't know if there was a resignation. Let me check. Okay, no, the final move of the game was rook e7 uh, here, and we had resignation from Gawain Jones. Stunning game by Gukesh. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do subscribe to never miss a future, and thanks very much for watching. See you soon.